Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I'm standing, I'm not sitting, because uh, I got something to share with you. So a couple of you, actually in particular, Melinda, how are you doing, sweetie, has been asking me to show uh, all of or as much as I can of my scarf and foulard collection. So that's why I'm standing, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be lifting them up for y'alls. Um, are you ready for this? Let's go. Okay, first... We're going to have, throughout the decades, you know, some stuff is younger, some stuff is not so young, I mean, fashion-wise, whatever. This is Moschino under the directorship of Jeremy Scott. This is spring-summer 2015. It was part of their Barbie collection. It's like Barbie accessories. Barbie shoes, and then we have the famous uh, biker bag as well, Moschino belts. A Moschino cap down there. We got the famous Moschino uh, heart sunglasses, belts, smileys, peace signs, what have you. So that's that. That's one of them. This is silk. Should be hand rolled. But since it's a 2015 production, I don't trust this stuff anymore, you know. And now it just says made in Italy. It doesn't say that it's hand rolled. So I do believe this was done by machine. So here is a vintage Moschino that is hand rolled. And you could see the difference. This one is from the 90s. It's so cool. It's all the sweet. This is typical also for Franco Moschino to play with foods and what their meaning is. Uh, United colors of Benetton. But instead of Benetton, it's Panetton. And Panetton is... Have it here. It's a typical uh, panettone. Is the way you would you would pronounce it in Veneto, in the northern part of Italy, and that is the particular sweet. It, you usually eat it for Christmas or you could or Easter, but usually it's a Christmas thing. So it's like all the united colors of the panettone, and then of course, Franco has the idea to put all the flags, not all, not the flags from the entire world, but some of the important flags, are added on the border of this uh, pink fula. So you have all of these foods. It's kind of like playing with the notions of politics and countries and regions. And, you know, I, I love it. Um, let's do... You've seen probably the video, if you follow my channel, on this one, the review of the Louis Vuitton with Takashi Murakami collaboration. Uh, this is my favorite collaboration between Louis Vuitton and an artist. Uh, here we have the Takashi Murakami Panda. This one is from the early 2000s. We have the onion head and we have the flower head. The onion head is here and the flower man is there. And then they repeat on the other side. This one is very special because according to how you bend it, you could either choose to have the edges, the borders, without the figures about the anime figures. Oh, I'm covering my microphone. Sorry, guys. This is going to be really bad. Or you could choose to bend it this way. I'm going to put only on one side so I don't affect the mic. And then you could actually have the figure popping there. All right. So that was Louis Vuitton. Moving on. What else we got here? This one is an interesting one. This is a brand that's very popular in Japan, but it is from Europe. It's called Star Styling, and these are all handmade. This is cotton that's been then, you know, dipped and uh, kind of sprinkled with all sorts of colors to create this batik effect. Um, the effect is beautiful. You just got to be very careful. You shouldn't really wash this, <laughs> you know, so don't get it too dirty. And then on two corners... Uh, sorry, on one corner, they added these fringes, which were also hand-dyed in the same batik effect. Look at that. This one is super cool. It's really, really beautiful. Um, Bjork loves this brand. She buys it a lot, so I've been told. And then, of course, you can twirl it around your neck, but I, I got the mic here, guys, so let's not mess with it too much. 
So this one is really beautiful. For summer, it's super cool. I love the colors. I love this rainbowy thing. I don't know if they still produce these. Probably not. Oh my God. I'm, I'm thinking already of like how I'm going to fold this all back in, in their boxes once it's all done. Because you know me, I archive everything. So I'm super concerned about these things, but whatever. Okay, this, I love this piece. I love this little fetishy little neckerchief, also in silk. This is Moschino, early 2000s, I would say. Uh, all sorts of high heel shoes. Uh, very Betty Page, you know, very pin-up, very bizarre, very John Willie's bizarre. And that's why I love this so much, because I do have the entire bizarre collection um, as pu published in, in like a two-volume book by Taschen. Uh, but you could see the close-up, it has ribbons and, and shoes. And I love this kind of skin tone beige, juxtaposed to the black drawings of the high heels. It's just so, so beautiful. I mean, this is just beautiful as an object. Of course, what are you going to do with a little neckerchief like that? It's too small to do anything with it, really. So there's that. Um, let's do another Louis Vuitton. Here's another collaboration with Takashi Murakami, also silk, hand-rolled, made in Italy. This is the standard uh, monogram pattern that Takashi morphed and redesigned, adding all the, or, or, all the colors and twists to it. And in particular, this one is very special because we have the exchange that Takashi did. He took out the flowers from the Louis Vuitton monogram, and instead of the flowers, he added eyeballs, anime eyeballs that he designed in all different colors. So you could see all these little round things. They're all eyeballs. So this one is called I See You, haha. -ha. Well, obviously, for obvious reasons. And then it has the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven color pattern stripes on the side. This one is very, very beautiful, very saturated colors. It's a very thick woven silk. I'm loving this one. This is really, really an art piece because we have an artist actually designing for a brand. Uh, moving on. This is not a full art, it's like an imperial tie, I call it. It's like a bow tie. This is from one of the last collections, it's Yves Saint Laurent, Rive Gauche. It's in silk, it's a huge, it's a thick tie, as you can see. You could like make a bow tie out of it or you could kind of let it hang really big. I usually tie it in a knot and I fluff it up really big. And you have uh, the pleating on the top and then it opens up, and not on the top, on the back of the neck, and then it opens up to this beautiful silk wide piece on both sides. So it's a tie, it's, it's like a hybrid between a tie and a sort of a weird type of scarf, you could call it that way. Oh, but I wanted to show you the difference between Moschino, like foulard and scarf packages today. Well, I don't know if they changed them again, this was like the entire 2000s. Very simple boxes, you open them up like that, and then you have the Moschino paper inside and the scarf. But in the 90s, they, we're now we're talking, this is the Moschino I love, this is the 90s gold, you know, everything was gold and then it was like black on the inside. This is, this is luxury, guys. This is real luxury. But they don't do that anymore, of course. And it says Moschino on top and then Fulaz at the bottom. Okay, moving on. This is a very interesting one. One of my favorite designers, still to date, even though he sold his brand and, well, to to another Japanese brand, I guess. He still designs for his own brand, but he doesn't own it anymore. So that's why he became a little bit lazy when it comes to designing the pieces. But back in the 2000s, he was very innovative because he had to push his own brand. And this is kind of, he played, he was also very political and, and pushed the agenda with flags and stuff. But this was done on purpose to provoke. Now, this is the American flag done in silk mixed with cotton. His name is Bernhard Wilhelm. Uh, you could check out, I went to his show in Los Angeles a couple of years back. There was an exhibition of his, and uh, I filmed it, and I did a little walkthrough for you guys. Uh, this is a piece by Bernard Wilhelm from 2000, and mm, I want to say 2008, from his superhero collection, or him making fun of the superhero co of superheroes of the world. I have a lot of pieces from this collection. I have... Uh, um, the sunglasses that cover the whole, like mask sunglasses and weird shorts and skimpy outfits. But this, this particular silk and cotton piece is, is provocative in a way. It has a certain sheer, it has a certain symbology behind it. Um, it. It's a very important piece as far as his creation goes and as far as this designer goes and as far as uh, fashion goes in the, in the mid to late 2000s. Moving on, what else do we've got here? Ah, oh, this is super funny. Um, 
you know, I had to get the pieces from the Versace for H&M collaboration. So I got these, they're all machine done. This is like a silk with cotton. You remember this one when it came out, Versace for H&M. This is a huge scarf. There you have like the sunset or sunrise with the animalier print. And then we got a sun here in the gold. Of course, Donatella did not want to use the Medusa for the H&M collaboration. So no H&M collaboration piece has the Medusa. They all have... I don't know. I guess she didn't want to give the Medusa out for, for a cheap collaboration like that. So another piece from that collection, from the male part of the collection, is the op art print. All, this one is, I would say, cotton. I don't know if this has any silk in it, but actually... What is it? Is it printed? Right? Oh, no, it's just... It has a little bit of dust. But we have the op art print, which... Coincidentally, it was also available, slightly altered for their Spring-Summer 2010 collection, and then a year later, uh, it was available for H&M. So that was kind of a bummer for who spent all that money on the original Versace pieces and then got the H&M for, like, dirt cheap later on. This one is also one of those silk pieces with the crocodile pattern, also reminiscent of the famous Gianni Versace Miami collection. We have the palm trees, we have the alligators or crocodiles. We got blue juxtaposed to black and green Great colorways, um, very reminiscent also of the colorways that J. Lo wore on the red carpet somewhere, sometime. I can't even remember. Don't even matter. Eh, don't matter, do. <laughs> Where are we going? Oh, okay, this is a tie. I know it's a tie. It's not a scarf, but it's a silk tie. It's a vintage Gucci tie. Now, this was before Mr. Alessandro Michele, you know, started destroying the brand. Uh, fascinating because it has all of these gorgeous cacti. Look at these cactuses. Cactuses. <laughs> <laughs> cactuses, or all these cacti. Uh, it's like a yellow with blue and green print. I love this tie because it's so, I don't know, it's so weird for Gucci to do something like that. This is like vintage, this is from the 90s. Actually, no, a bit later, it's the Tom Ford era. Um, then moving on, here's another Moschino piece. This scarf is gorgeous. Now this is the one, this is the Fula that was inside of the golden box I showed you before. And I've made a video review of this one. This one is hand-rolled silk. This is from when Franco Moschino was still alive. This is so typical for him. This is a treasure, really, to have one of these pieces. This is like all of his symbology mixed in one. And uh, I have done a video on how to interpret symbols, compositions of images, what what means. You could check that video out in the description box down below. But here, what we have very fascinating, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we have uh, the famous babies that he used. We have like traditional food that he used in Italy. He plays a lot with symbols. Uh, Italian superstition. People are very superstitious in Italy. They hate the number 13. Well, there you go. He puts it on his clothing. You're actually purchasing something that brings bad luck in a way. Moschino is spelled out here as moschifo. Schifo means something you're disgusted by. So he's playing with this word of schifo and schino. Moschino would be his surname, but schifo means disgust. So it's like mo disgust instead of moschino. So he's playing with that as well. Um, I am what I am is one of his famous logos. I mean, we also know the song. It is about gay pride uh, a lot. Um, the peace sign is there. We got his famous rendition of olive oil, Popeye's girlfriend. Uh, here is a silhouette of one of his models from one of the catwalks that has been turned into a black image. We have the crown depicting um, royalty. He loved to play also with, you see, the crown is on the British, the change of guards in front of Buckingham Palace. Uh, the Mediterranean, the Italian flag, the music note, because Italy's famous for music. We have the Anarchy logo. By the way, guys, did you know, I was told, and I, you know, I, I know my fashion history, but this was shocking to me. I was just told by a friend of mine the other day that the Honor Anarchy logo, uh, the circle with the A crossing over out of the circle, was designed by Vivian Westwood. She's the one who invented it. I was shocked. And then we have all certain different religions, the Catholic religion, we have uh, the Star of David as well. Um, oh, this is also funny. We have a clown, Italy's famous for their opera and their clowns. We have the symbol of love. Here's Franco Moschino himself in drag, hiding behind the smiley. He's almost invisible. That's done on purpose. God, I love this scarf so much. This is like having a part of Franco with me. It's just, this is such a masterpiece. So, so, so it's such a statement, you know. Anyway, uh, moving on, 
where's the other piece? Ah, it was in this box. Okay, so now I'm going to show you this, the Moschino scarf that was in this package from the same collection as uh, the fetishy shoes, the pinup shoes. This is a longer scarf or a longer foulard in a rosy color tone. So you see the difference in, in, in tone. This is kind of skin tone beige and this is more rosy. This is more like a print of all of those pinup magazines. Uh, <laughs> corsage magazines, how to dress, how to put on a dress, how, you know. We have a lot of 50s, we have a lot of 60s, uh, we have a lot of gorgeous pinups. You could wear it both up and down like this. So this one is a very, very long foulard. This is sealed off with a machine. This is not hand, hand sealed. And you could see all the corsets and everything. I can't really go too back, too backwards, but there. Look at that. It's, it's a huge, huge scarf. And it's really, really beautiful. And you could do a lot with it. You could also put it, you know, on your head or whatever have you. Uh, but this one is gorgeous and you could also read all the texts. The print is so, so perfect that um, you could technically spend a whole day reading all of these advertisements, tidbits taken out of magazines. In some places they have modified what the texts say by adding Moschino in them and stuff like that. So that's that. What else do I have here? worth mentioning or noting. Oh, this is a really old scarf that I have, a fula from Dolce Gabbana from the 90s. It was very perfectly pleated, but due to a lot of wear, it kind of transformed. Actually, I washed it once or twice. And once you wash pleated stuff, that's, this is what you get. It ain't pleated no more. <laughs> it used to be, but now it ain't no more. This is just a very soft, soft sheer silk. It's still really beautiful, even though it's not as perfectly pleated as it used to be. But it's a nice little sheer, little nothing that you could wear in summer. And uh, I guess depending on how, when I analyze these pieces, one of my favorite pieces to date is this winning piece that I managed to hunt down. It took me 11 years uh, together with the Key Paul 45, Takashi Murakami with Louis Vuitton series, uh, the cherries print overlaid pattern on top of the classic ton sur ton uh, brown beige monogram canvas. So this is a silk fula made in Italy. It is the biggest size that they make. The other ones are slightly smaller. It's, about, it's around 90 to 90 centimeters and you have cherries all over it. I've done a review video on this one so you could see that uh, in the description box down below. This one is, is definitely one of my favorites. I, I wear it in a lot of my videos as well. It's just, this is, this is an art piece. I mean, we have an artist literally working on top of uh, a designer pattern. I mean, what more? I mean, I can't wish for more. It's like my. It's like it made my year to have found that piece. So okay, we're out of time. But basically, that would be kind of like the majority of, of what I have and and what I what I love and cherish a lot. It's not like I purchase, you know, things all the time. I mean, this year uh, the three foulards that I purchased were all secondhand because I'm not purchasing new this year. So the three Louis Vuitton pieces were uh, all purchased secondhand. It took forever to hunt them down because they're from the early 2000s. But these other pieces, you know, from since many years. It, it, but I really wait for the right moment to, to, to get something. And these H&M for Versace foulards, I mean, it was a historic event for me personally to have like Versace collaborate. Wait, I got to I'm going to have to bend down. <laughs> to see me. Um, it was a historic moment to have like a Versace collaboration with H&M, but I don't like H&M obviously, but th those pieces, and actually uh, these uh, made it uh, on sale. They, they, <laughs> I bought them on sale online at a certain point because they were not sold out. So I re literally got them for like $15 or $10 each. So of course in that case, I had to get the whole collection. Um, so thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you liked this video. If you have, please do thumb it up and uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, but do wish to, please subscribe to my channel <laughs> here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So, no matter how the wind blows and no matter where our foulards are blowing in the wind, we never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.